the article today, Why You Must Really Know Yourself Before Starting a Business. Know yourself before you start a business. Yeah, why, I agree with why that. Why you must that. really know yourself. Okay. And, uh, I, uh, so far, new, I'm liking that. That's a good title. We've got a, a new title. young entrepreneur here today that he can opine on this a little bit later, perhaps. But uh, He can do what? Give an opinion. Okay. Opine. You don't know what opine means. Bill O'Reilly <laughs> uses that word all the time. You should know no. what that word means. <laughs> That's not even a long word that he still it's didn't It's not. It's easy. <laughs> okay, Joe. Bring the, I, <sighs> Do we have should, to have Chris running the board? Should have rang the bill. Um, okay. Number one. You should know that starting the right business requires knowing yourself. Yeah, and you'd be surprised how many small business people really don't know themselves when it comes to a business setting. That that's such a true statement. Uh, or or they do and they ignore it. <laughs> also, I mean, every, some people know they're not good at everything, but they think they can overcome it, and that's probably going to be some of the other things. Oh, that's list. interesting. But uh, see, that's what a, that's the way a coach looks at it because coach can help them overcome it. You see, okay. Why well, you must really know yourself before starting a business. Number two, attracting the right team requires knowing what you don't know. We've talked about that before. That's true in the corporate world as well as if you got your own business. Yeah, you know, I think you've heard me tell that story a bunch. I remember when I was in high school telling my teacher I didn't need to learn this because I was going to hire somebody to be able to do it. And and I quickly you learned. You stuck with that your entire uh, career. <laughs> I know. Well, and I quickly learned once I got in business for myself and I needed admin help and office help, which you know I'm really weak in that area. Uh, hiring somebody for a position you don't know how to do is really hard to do and you quickly learned you don't know how to do that either so so uh it, it becomes a problem yeah and sometimes it's not just admin things it could be key things in fact, right we're going to talk about that in right. coach's corner right. today there's some things that you just might not be good at and you better admit it and get somebody that is number three building a business requires confidence in yourself that's true you know, most small business people have a lot of confidence in themselves, um, so I, I don't find that to be a big big challenge or a big statement. Uh, most of us believe in ourselves or we just simply wouldn't be doing it to begin with. Well, that's true, and I think that's partly what they're saying. Yes, so you better make sure you have confidence in yourself if you're going to become an entrepreneur. Number four, being authentic and genuine gets the best from others you know if you're not genuine honestly you're not going to have a sustainable business because we're going to be able to see right through it uh, it, it, it just happens so often it, it happens whether you're walking into the retail store uh, or you're talking to a salesman that's selling a particular product you got to believe in the product you got to be genuine about it and if, if not uh, I, it's going to be a short period of time before that jumps out at you so that that's I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that it's statement. both internal and external it's the people that work with you as well as the uh, customers. Well, I hadn't thought of it in that way, but but that's fine. I mean, I, dealing with your employees, it really is very important for them to know and understand the vision that you have, and you do want to be as open as you feel like you can because that genuine dialogue is going to help you redefine things as you move forward because that's what's going to happen. You're going to have this vision, and in a short period of time, you're going to realize, oh, that doesn't quite work the way I want it to work, and so you're going to need to tweak it, and the person that's going to help you do that is going to be the people you've got surrounding you. Well, you know, we talked earlier about uh, knowing yourself. Well, number five is make better business decisions by playing to your strengths. Yeah, you kind know. the same thing, actually. Uh, well, I mean, I mean in, in, in my case, I know what I do good, and that's why I try and position myself. You know, I've, I've told you many times I've, I've got a small capital investment firm. You know what you do firm. well. Well, English isn't one of them, obviously. Okay, that, that would be a true statement. <laughs> Thank so, you. Stop with the bell. <laughs> Wayne was basically asking me to do that. Can I get back on the topic here? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so here's here's the truth of it. The truth of it is, you know, I've had a small capital investment firm for years. I tell people that all the time. It was way, you know, I've, I've been loaning people money and, and buying and selling businesses and, and taking on partners and managers way before there was a cool name for it. And what I've learned is the best deals for me are the, are the deals that have this area that they're weak that I can plug myself into that area for three to six months and exactly. help and train somebody. So you exactly. really do want to work on those strengths. Okay. We're talking about why you must really know yourself before starting a business. Uh, I like this one. Know when to say no without guilt. We've yeah, you, about this you would guilt. like that because we've talked about it before. You're really good at that. Um, well, you got to do it. Can't well, do everything. You know, it's funny because in my, you know, I grew up in a, my, my background's in a restaurant business, right? So, so the customer's always right. So you really do want to find a way. And I, I used to one of the mottos I used to have in my business was find a way to say yes. And I'm really thinking about the customer, right? I want to, I want to please them. 
the problem is there are some times in business when no is the right answer. And, and knowing the difference it really is the wisdom in small business. It's not easy to say no uh, because for years we've, we've learned that um, you really do want to try and please your client the best that you can. W- hanging around you, I have learned that, in fact, sometimes no and, and thank you, no thank you to that client is probably the best thing to do. I mean, I've certainly had some clients that I burned a bunch of time with that uh, I'd have been better off to say thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough issue. You don't ever want to say no to a client. And, uh, you know, you could say, well, when you first start your business, uh, you really don't want to get too broad because you might fail. On the other hand, you're trying to figure out, you know, who your customer is and what they want. So, you know, it's a it's a tough issue, but well, it, it is it, something you've got to get good at one way and, or the other. And when your bank account is low, it's kind of hard to say no thank you. Exactly. You, you know, exactly. And, and I think that's where the corporate in you does so well because they teach you in corporate, here's what we're after, here's the client, here's what we're after, uh, and, and here's wh- why we're after them. And so it's easier for you to say no because you realize that does not fit with what your corporation is after. And for small business, it's, it's really harder to say no. Okay, the last item. You won't improve if you don't know what needs fixing. Well, you know, one of the things I tell small business people all the time is you need to do a survey. One of the things I try and do to to put inside a letter of intent is to send out a survey to all of their clients. A lot of times, a lot of professional companies and organizations, the first thing I recommend they do is send out a survey to their clients. Now, you as the seller would, could actually send that out just as if the company is asking questions. But for, for me, you're going to give me that information because it's going to lead me to know what the future looks like, what's good, what's bad about the, the business. And it's going to help me form a better business uh, moving forward when I purchase the business. So that's one of the things I, I do with it. But it, it also is a really healthy thing to do um, if you're just running your business on a day-to-day basis. So one of the things I would take away from that statement is that surveys a really good place to gather and know information on whether it's customers and or employees. Uh, you know, bottom line is you just got to ask. You know, the other aspect I'd put on that is sometimes when you start to have some success as a business, you get so wound up in continuing to do the same things over and over again without stepping back and saying, hey, there's some things I really need to do to fix and improve my business over time or I'm not going to grow. And in fact, that's why some owners sometimes hit a wall. You know, suddenly they've been working their buns off, but uh, they've been forgetting to fix things and and, and move move forward. You know, know, that's interesting you say that because one of the things I've done for years and I tell... uh, uh, clients to do this is I, I, for me. I, I've got a little pad by my bed, and I'll and I'll make notes and things that I've been thinking about, or I've got a, a pad um, that it's sitting by my chair while I'm watching TV. And if an idea comes to me, then I'll write it down on that pad. And I tell people just put that stuff in a notebook. What you'll find is you'll come back to it exactly. a year later and, and think, oh, that was an idea I had, and I never really acted on it. And and once you get into the business, sometimes you forget those what could be in fact great ideas and so just start jotting down these ideas and uh you know when things get a little little stale for you 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 pull those ideas out and you'd be surprised what they come up with okay Are somebody i saw i saw a movie where the, this girl had this um book and she called it a book of possibilities that's kind of interesting <laughs> i like that <laughs> now that book for you would be a lot bigger than, <laughs> lot bigger than the one you wrote i'll tell you that <laughs> 